Hey, it is your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful, empowered harmonizers. We are zooming in and focusing in on a great viewer question, and that is, how do I stop a narcissist from taking my energy? I feel depleted, depressed, sad, and I'm out of energy. I don't know how to end it. So I think that's a great viewer question that a lot of people can relate to. When we talk about a relationship with a narcissist, unequivocally, if we look at the structure of the relationship and how we feel, it's going to evolve through three sometimes distinct but not always very distinct stages, such as being love-bombed, devalued, and discarded. And oftentimes, other people who are in relationship to a narcissist are people who are in a position of supply, meaning support, meaning the givers of kindness, consideration, time, listening, caring, putting their needs first. And then a situation of codependence gets set up where then one's role and one's mechanism in the relationship becomes one of support of their needs to the deficit or to the loss of knowing and being in touch and supporting of your own. In other words, rather than worrying about your own health, you're worried about their health. Instead of worried about what you need in a relationship, you're focused on what they need in a relationship. Instead of focusing and doing what you want to do, you're focusing and doing what they want to do. This becomes embedded in a position of feeling worthless, meaning worth less. If you could put a dollar figure of value, you feel worth less than them. If they're worth a dollar, you feel worth a penny. And then also this is weighed in when it comes to standing up for yourself, bringing your needs to the forefront, in other words, listening to yourself, oftentimes then listening to your own intuition, there becomes a wall or a barrier set up where you no longer trust yourself because you're so used to getting a reward from being other focused, other centered, having an external locus of control. And then your energy and your value begins to seep out. You become hyper vigilant, listening to them. Is that their footsteps? Is that their knock on the door? Is that their text? Is that their ring? And then all of a sudden, you become hyper attuned to others' needs and always on the lookout for others' needs, meaning you never register attuned to and then get into a healthy cycle of connecting and registering within. This creates an emptiness and a loss of energy. You become depleted, adrenal fatigue. People experience um, a myriad of health system, um, health issues, um, from everything from uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, the develop of, you know, accidents that you didn't, you know, that you should, you're not usually clumsy, but, but all of a sudden, you, you know, become accident prone. Um, you, you don't feel that you have a good eating schedule, a good sleeping schedule, a good work schedule, or a good homework schedule where you don't really feel in tune to your own needs and you're running on vapors, you're running on empty, you become depressed, you, you know, don't feel that you can handle your emotions. They're either go way high or way low. Your energy is being seeped out to another this is known as an external locus of control, meaning you've lost that connection within. It's as if you've severed your own wires to your own, listening to your own heart, listening to your own momentum. Things come into your mind, the solution, and then you minimize or deny. You say, oh, that won't work. Oh, I can't move. Oh, I can't apply for that job oh, I don't have a choice. You begin to dismiss it. That's because attuning to yourself, you've been in a chronic state of being dismissed. In other words, someone who invalidates you. When you're with a relationship with a narcissist, oftentimes when you're devalued and discarded, your very needs are dismissed. They're laughed at. In the event of the covert narcissist, they are unequivocally ignored and neglected. 
They are not attended to. Ignore it and it will go away. Ignore your needs long enough and they will go away or they will become distorted and perverted. Meaning you enter into a codependent status. Codependent um, no more by Melanie Beattie should be one of the first things that you purchase in order and go and get at your local library or Amazon or wherever you purchase your books, eBay, secondhand books, uh, Barnes and Noble, wherever you find books, make sure you go and get that book, even if it's an audio book. I would highly recommend getting the actual physical printed version so you can highlight, make notes, use colored markers to highlight and use a bookmarker so you can use it for reference. You need to understand what this is, what codependence is, and see if you can relate to it. Codependent no more, Codependence Anonymous, if you wanna join, in, um, join and enjoy a support group. Now, when we talk about losing your energy, it's because you're, you're losing value and valuation of self. You're not believing in yourself. You are not tuning to those little sparks of inspiration. I really should do something else. I really should confront this person. I really should get another job. I really should make a move. I should really pack up my, my stuff and hit the bricks. You know, these are inspirations that will float into your mind that are your answers, your solutions, but they are in one ear and out the other because they are not grasped, they are not attended to. You you know lose focus of your vision in your, your intention for your life. If you are losing energy, you need to get back into your original game plan. What is your dream? Begin to believe again in your dreams and follow them, follow through. If you are, you know, saying life, you know, things, you know, miracles don't happen. Dreams don't come true. Um, it's not meant to happen for me in this lifetime. All these messages of giving up. It's like you've, you're leaking out. You've got emotional leaky gut syndrome. You know, your emotions are just being leached out by others and you're, you're experiencing an external locus of control. You got to bring it in. You got to switch it up. You got to say, no, no, thank you, you know, and begin to look at what actually does give you energy, what does give you focus, what does give you joy, what does fill up your cup and begin to fill up your cup first. Continually go back to filling your cup up first so you can feel fulfilled and happy and have a sense of content. If you are in a relationship where it's really bottomed out and you're in a state of desperation and despair, you're going to do desperate measures to try to get back on your feet. Desperate measures might mean, you know, saying no. Desperate measures might mean taking time off. Desperate measures might be able to take a look at and embracing yourself and attending to yourself and writing down your needs and getting a calendar and making sure that you follow through, especially if you're new at the game of shoring up your energy. Oftentimes, you'll repeat the same bad decisions, the same bad behavior, the, so the same emotional habits again and again and again. The body is works on like a set it and forget it. it. It likes to do things again and again, especially the subconscious, especially the unconscious will repeat behaviors out of its own command system. It's like a computer. You tell it to do, you give it a command, you know, support the narcissist. You know, you give it a command, please this person. A happy narcissist is a happy self. Or would look at your, go back and look at your external locus of control. Face it head on. <clears throat> look at the degree to which you're putting somebody above you and you are making them worth more and you worth less. To what degree is your worthlessness running your life and causing your energy to be depleted? To what degree have you put somebody else as more important than you? And oftentimes until you really experience a grave health issue, 
you realize you've got to come back within your own body and and live and look at your own commands where you have perhaps leached in or carried the shame of this narcissist and you're then trying to help them through people pleasing. If you're in a cycle with a relationship, oftentimes their insecurity masked is what's running the show. Their insecurity masked by their illusion and how good they are at being master manipulators. You know, you're you're relating to their manipulation. You're in a relationship with their manipulation, their persona, their mask. You're feeding into their illusion and then so you're building them up while taking yourself down piece by piece, moment by moment, decision by decision. You're not you're not seeing, you know, how you need to pull it in and stop over obligating. Oftentimes it's not what you need to do, it's what you need to stop doing to stop losing energy. Take a look at the big picture. To what degree are you have you over obligated? Have you put their needs first? Have you become hypersensitive to them and become hypersensitive to your own deficit? I can't do this. I'm not good enough. I don't have the intelligence. I don't have the emotional strength. Oftentimes these I don't have are these self these self-limiting beliefs are embedded and leached out because of the erroneous and flawed messages that you have absorbed from these narcissists who you have then subconsciously and then repeatedly bought into the message that you don't have what it takes. You're not good enough looking. You're not smart enough. You're not wealthy enough. You don't, you're not talented enough. You are not enough. Do you see how this plays out and is repeated again and again? And then people develop the defense mechanisms which will wear you out and take your energy away because your energy, your psychic energy is caught up in defense mechanisms. What does a defense mechanism look at? Like, how does it play out? Well, the narcissist, you know, might not pay attention to me, so I need to go and get a new car. The narcissist might not pay attention to me, so I need to go and get a new outfit. The narcissist might not pay attention to me, so I need to prepare a whatever, whatever, so that they will see how good I am. Whether it's a, a vacation, whether it's an Instagram post, whether it's a text to try to please them. And this becomes oftentimes very depleting once again because people then find out that they are not loved by the narcissist in the same way that they have loved them. In other words, you've done A, B, C, X, Y, Z, you've been there for the narcissist and you think it's they're, they're going to reciprocate if you do it long enough. Codependence and people pleasing is something diametrically opposed to what a narcissist does. They are the takers of the world. They will not give. If they do give, it's very intermittently and people, you will find that oftentimes people are in relationships, they then cling on to the whatever it is that they're getting from the narcissist, the reaction, the approval. And so this people pleasing and living for the approval of others becomes this external locus of control and you don't experience what it is to erect boundaries and be assertive. So you begin to violate your own standards. You begin to violate your own boundaries. You become enmeshed. Their life becomes, you know, your needs. You know, you become focused on supporting them and you're not supporting yourself. You're not receiving that with which you are giving out. It becomes imbalanced. You know, life can be temporarily imbalanced, but when it's chronic and ongoing, it can become very depressing sending and it can leach out emotional value from you where you're just losing value in yourself and you feel depleted. You are allowing other people to take. You're worried, you know, worried about what someone's going to think, what they're going to say, how they're going to look at you. That is external locus of control. Don't fall for the bait. 
Even if you've fallen for it before, it's okay to say no more, not today. In fact, not for 30 days. If I wanna go back to feeling depressed after 30 days, then that's up to me. But let me see what responses and what, I'm sorry, what reactions and what self-limiting beliefs, if you can just look at those, you'll be a lot further along and you'll find that you start making better decisions. You start finding that you put on the brakes emotionally. You don't go to the events where you feel ridiculed, not good enough. You start looking at other relationships. You start looking at spending quality time alone. You start looking at your lessons learned in your recovery journal. You start taking your recovery dates more and more seriously and they get longer and longer. You start actually giving yourself the recovery gifts. You, you stop missing your recovery dates. You stop missing your recovery gifts. You, you get back on track. You start shoring up yourself emotionally so you're no longer on the emotional, you know, leaky emotional syndrome where you're just being leached out. Others are always more valuable. These are self-limiting beliefs that you need to look at and understand how they are set up in your subconscious and how they play out in your everyday life. Begin to correct them. I do believe in myself. I do trust myself. I do know what I need to do. I do need to be more assertive. I do need to protect myself. I do need to enforce my boundaries and standards. This is what I need to do. And so it is. Whatever it is that's been hindering you and holding you back from this decision-making process and this self-evaluation needs to be corrected. You have the ability and power to pull it back. It's a matter of saying, I am. I am intelligent. I am inspired. I am driven. I am wonderful. I am magnificent. I am setting my up in, my life is running in divine order and I'm in touch with that divine order now, and the divine protection has me along the way. Begin to pull back that, that energy and that juice within. Begin to recapture your dreams. Go and get a dream catcher. You know, go and, and get, you know, a new calendar of inspirational quotes and read it. So many people get the recovery journal, but they don't do it. They get the appointment book, but they don't use it. They get their affirmations, their astromations written out on index cards and they never pull them out. They take only one step of the journey. They don't follow through. They don't, you know, bring it full circle. You need to enforce this for yourself. You need to realize you need energy. You need a healthy perspective. You are running the show, not the narcissist and not the self-limiting beliefs that they mirror back to you time and time again. Begin to take down the mirror. Begin to take down the judgment. Begin to take down the criticism, the insults, the better than them, uh, the, uh, the, the, the begin to take them down a couple notches. Oh, but this is really scary. Well, then who would be running my life? Oftentimes is the worry and concern. You are running your life. This is the information age. You can have access to tools and trainings and information that hitherto, even just a decade ago, you did not have access to. You are in a privileged position. There are support groups. There are online communities such as on YouTube where you can learn videos, you can interact, you can ask questions, you can participate, you can get the resources, you can get the acknowledgement and validation that you need to strengthen up and shore up your boundaries and elevate your standards and begin to see the results. Stop allowing other people to rob you of your joy, your happiness, your energy, your focus, Stop listening. Begin to put a little bit of blinders on and begin to hone your focus. Stop listening to the manipulation that they will have you, you know, try to distract you out of the corner of your ear, the corner of your eye. Stop attending to them outside and begin to attend within. 
Even though I've let it gone for so long, I know I really need to. Even though I have, you know, allowed myself to be violated, I can stop allowing myself to be violated right now by. What does violation look like when I'm being, my energy is being robbed from me? What does this experience look like? And what should I do instead? Begin to become aware of what these visual images look like because the images are running the show. Your subconscious and your unconscious respond to images and it, it moves by commands. So if you have in error commanded yourself to feel less than and you are living that nightmare, then begin to wake up from that nightmare and re define and get re in touch with your dream catch your dream see where you fit in oh but peace and harmony this is lonely i might need to you know spend a night alone or a dinner you know with somebody new or whatever it is that's holding you back fear is the only thing you need to be afraid of if you have been afraid of letting this person go you need to look at how that fear is running your life you're living in the fight or flight begin to correct that Begin to breathe through it. Begin to make new decisions. Set your intention on a new vision that is built on self-respect, balance, and peace, and knowledge, and certainty of value within. <clears throat> the narcissist doesn't really want you to live that dream, to live that reality. And the reality is where the rubber meets the road. If you are in a lack of energy, it's because where you're, you've allowed your reality, your I am, your present moment to be leached out. Begin to say, no, I'm not allowing my energy to be leached out. This ain't going to happen. No matter what they say, they're going to try to hover you back in. They're going to go for the same, you know, habits. You know, they're going to go for the same pattern. And if they don't get what they want, then they're going to try to find another source of supply. So be it. It doesn't mean that you're defeated. It doesn't mean you're a loser. Don't worry about it. Let them move on to another source of supply who might feel less than, who might feel invalued, who thinks that they're better than, but who's going to go through the same cycle you are. Don't waste your breath on trying to saving them. Save yourself. This is your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today. And I hope that these videos do help. Please share and please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support. Peace out. Have a beautiful day.